Hello and welcome to part two of the ESAM webinar series. My name is Alex Howard and I'm a part of the SARDI research team that performs regular analysis of the national ESAM data to prepare monthly reports for red meat establishments, MLA and the Department of Agriculture. In this video, I'll be discussing some of the key micro and statistical concepts that are encountered in your monthly ESAM reports. So your monthly ESAM reports are broken into sections according to the different microbial species and their results. But before we consider the results, it's worthwhile to remind ourselves just how these microorganisms relate to one another and how they relate to food safety and process hygiene. Now, first of all, we have our total viable count, which is a measure of all different types of aerobic bacteria. This bacteria could have originated from a number of sources, including animal hides, plant equipment, hands, or even just from the air. And for this reason, we expect to almost always get a count from our ESAM samples for TVC. Now TVC gives us no indication of the specific types of bacteria present, but it is used as a general indicator to assess processing hygiene and shelf life. Now within TVC, we have Enterobacteriaceae, which is a large family of bacteria that contains the rest of our ESAM microbes. These include our coliforms, which give us an indication of fecal and environmental contamination. And within that, we have E. coli, which is our definitive fecal indicator. Now, there are a number of different types of E. coli, most of which are harmless, but a few, i.e. our STEX, have serious human health implications and hence the additional testing requirements for beef. Lastly, we have salmonella which is, while rarely detected in Australian red meat, still a globally significant foodborne pathogen and one we, that we must contend with. And that's how all the little microbes interact and are related to each other within our processed animals. Now, what type of microinformation is collected? So for our TVCs, coliforms and generic E. coli, we have quantitative counts from carcass and carton testing. As you can see, they're in different units because the carcass is a swab, whereas carton is actually a sample. Now, the number of samples that return a positive micro count is used to calculate prevalence. And results for TVC coliforms and generic E. coli are presented in summary tables, side-by-side -side box plots, and time plots. And we'll go through each of those different plot types and how to interpret them in this presentation. Now, for salmonella, we get just get a result either a detect or not detected. We also get prevalence, the percentage of positives, and serotype information. And this result is just presented in summary tables. And for our E. coli 0157 and non 0157 STEX, we get potential positives, confirmed positives, and prevalence of confirmed positives, as well as serotype information. And these results are presented in a different type of summary table, and we have some time plots as well. Now, raw micro counts tend to be really highly variable. And what we mean by this is we get either lots of either really low or really high counts. And that makes it difficult to identify meaningful trends in the data. So what we do in order to smooth out this variability is we transform these raw counts into log counts. And what that means is for each increase in a log count of one, that represents a 10 times increase in the actual raw count. Now it can be a little bit confusing, but what actually happens when we use the log scale is we encounter negative counts whenever the raw count falls below one colony forming unit. And that can be a bit tricky to get your head around. So we'll bring that concept up back later when we're having a look at some real results. Now, one of the most common figure types that you're going to encounter in your monthly ESAM reports are these summary tables. So summary tables contain prevalence and count summaries. So here at the top, we have our prevalence summary table and count summary table. And what they show is for the latest month and previous month, your establishment prevalence and count summaries. Now, it's good practice to check that the latest month's data is correct and has been updated. The tables also show a summary of the results from the previous three years at your establishment, as well as a summary of national counts or prevalence over that same time period. Now, these tables can be a little bit busy, 
But the key figures to look out for are the median, which is the middle number within our data set, the mean, which in this case is the average of just the positive counts, and then the standard deviation or SD, which gives us a measure of our spread about the mean, otherwise known as variability. Now another really common figure type that we encounter in our ESAM reports are, are box plots. And if you'll notice, they actually contain much of the same information um, as our summary tables. So we have our median, which is our middle number, indicated here by the dot within the box. And the box itself contains 50% of our data. And outside of that, we have these whiskers, upper which contains the upper limit of expected values and the lower whisker contains the lower limit of expected values. And then any counts that are occurring outside of these whiskers are unusually low or unusually high counts. Now, uh, box plots are a really useful tool for comparing results over time. You can stack three years of data on a single plot and you can see straight away where certain trends are occurring. And that's a very powerful tool to have. Um, box plots also give us an indication of the variability of a data set. So that's indicated by the, the length of the boxes here. And that's an important concept to keep in mind when you're assessing your own results. Um, because by measuring the variability, you're able to make a comment on the level of process control that you have at your establishment. So what do we mean when we refer to process control and good process control? Well, what we're really talking about is consistency. And here we can see an example of a plant that has very consistent month to month counts. And they also have very short boxes, which indicates that within each month, their counts are very consistent as well. And they're doing that both for beef and sheep. So that's a really good example of a plant that has good process control. Now, if we contrast that with this plant, we can see that between each month, their counts fluctuate hugely. And not only that, they have a mixture of very short and very tall boxes, which is a surefire sign that their counts are varying hugely within the month as well. So that's an example of really poor or no process control. Um, and some of the things that can that can cause this can be out of your control, you know, it can be to do with your percentage of long haul and short haul stock, it can be to do with how many high risk, you know, lots, contaminated lots you have within a shift, it can be something like the number of staff you have on the floor, what operations you have available, how many supervisors, it could be even to do with your chain speed, how much time does staff have to intervene, it could be to do with your intervention methods and what's available or any decontamination steps you might have. So you really have to ask yourself when you have a huge change in your results month to month and within month like this, is what's changing in your process. Think critically about what's changing in your process or with your stock that could be ref reflected in these results. And trying to it's about trying to identify those things. Now ESAM reports also have a comparison with your establishment and, and the national data. Um, so take a look at them, it's just simple stuff. Are your median counts higher or lower? How's your month to month variability tracking? You know, there's gonna be some seasonal changes that occur and you'll be able to detect those pretty easily. But again, it goes back to that simple message of if massive fluctuations are occurring and occurring constant, constantly, start to have a think critically about how your process is changing month to month and within month. Now the last type of plot that we'll encounter in our ESAM reports are these E. coli time plots, which show the number of positive E. coli results that you're getting in those red points um, and where they occur, whether they're below, between or above the defined limits, your little m and your big M, which are indicated by those red dashed lines. Now results that are below the little m are considered acceptable, above the big M, are considered unacceptable and between M, little m and big M are considered marginal. And these plots can be useful to compare E. coli levels at individual plants compared to those found nationally over the same time period. But as you can see, the national plot has got so many detections that it's actually quite difficult to tell. So just really focus on your own establishment's results and, and how you're tracking in terms of those acceptable, unacceptable and marginal E. coli counts. Now the last real micro concept that I'm going to cover in this video is, is to do with the limit of detection, which is 
the lowest concentration at which an organism can be detected. Um, now this is dictated by the number of dilutions that are performed when counting the number of colony forming units, the CFU. Um, now serial dilutions are a practice used commonly by microbiologists so they can get a countable number of colonies on a plate. You know, there's no use counting from this plate on the left, which has got hundreds or thousands of colonies on a single plate. Um, that's a common practice, but problems can arise with this, with um, serial dilutions, um, because these dilutions tend to be historically set. And when micro performance improves, as it has significantly in Australian red meat processing, Sometimes these historical dilutions mean that bacteria is not getting detected at a low enough concentration. Now we can see here that this is a TV, an example of a TVC prevalence summary um, for this establishment. Um, and now remember, TVC is a measure of all aerobic bacteria. So you should almost always be getting a count. So why is this plant getting prevalence of 31%, 57%, and over three years, 50%, that, you know, when it should be north of 80%. You should always almost be getting a count. Um, so things like this you need to identify, because if you're not for your TVC getting a high enough prevalence, then there is something wrong with either your swabbing or your lab's limit of detection. And we can see also in our, our box plots, when this occurs too. Because if you note with this plant, how their counts are abruptly cutting off below the, the one log um, CFU per centimeter squared mark. And this is a surefire indication that the lab performing their micro testing is quantifying TVC exclusively from those diluted plates. Um, and this is an issue for two reasons. It elevates the mean and median counts for your plant as any counts below one log are not detected, which makes your carcass micro results look worse. And it also reduces the quality of your data, making it very difficult to identify trends um, and assess true performance changes. And we can see when the plant actually rectified it, all of a sudden their counts improved. They've got lower level of contamination. So when you know what to look for in your ESAM reports, something like this can be spotted and very quickly rectified by communicating with the lab. So that's actually going to wrap it up for part two of our ESAM webinar series. Hopefully that gives you a bit more of an understanding of the microbial and statistical concepts relating to your monthly ESAM reports and starts to get you to think about what your results say about the level of process control that you really have at your own establishments. Now in the next ESAM webinar, we will go through some real examples of establishment ESAM reports, breaking down the reports step by step. We'll compare micro results, looking at species microbiological differences and what to expect. And we'll compare plant and national results for TVC, E. coli, coliform and salmonella. And we'll also do some more commenting on establishment process control and helping you identify potential areas for improvement. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next ESAM webinar.